She's just been doing her squats. Just to get fresh. Good morning. The get yep. the blood pumping. <laughs> Good morning. You're watching Ireland AM. It's April 21st and we've got a great show lined up for you. We do indeed. Coming up this morning, we look at this morning's big news stories, including Ulster Bank closing its remaining Irish branches today. Uh, there's currently a six-month waiting list for an NCT and the same for a driving licence. That's why you're still on your bike. I need my end plates. Come on. I know. I'm still on my bike. We'll put them on back to our bike today, <laughs> just beside your stabilisers. Yeah. Anyway, we'll talk about the current very awkward situation for thousands of motorists. It was the end of the European road for Man United as they exited the Europa League quarterfinals with a whimper. We'll have that and all your top sporting stories later. After race, made in Chelsea star Ollie Locke tells us about life on a scripted reality juggernaut and what comes afterwards. I don't know about you, but I'm very excited to chat to Ollie. Yeah, very yeah. lovely. Expect dad as well. I know, twins. Very exciting. Oh, and we're keeping the glam going on the catwalk with some head turning luck for Ladies Day at the races. Yeah, now, Derek's got your weather this morning and he's doing his bit to help tidy up the place a bit too. Where are you, Derek? <laughs> Absolutely, Mark Gurney and Mongo Tommy. Bjorn Show, Kildara Modern in you. Uh, Kildare here this morning to dry and bright, start but a good deal of cloud cover, then building as the day goes on. It looks like the best of the sunshine holding on into parts of Ulster out there this Friday. But, guys, if we swing the camera around. Look what we found here in the heart of the village. We have got all the good people here from Milltown. It's their national spring clean. Dan, what are we going to be doing this morning? Derek, welcome to Magnificent Milltown. And we're here this morning going out painting all the walls in the common areas and picking up the litter around Milltown and making the place spick and span, which it normally is anyway. Absolutely. So we're going to be having a busy morning, guys. We're going to be rolling up the sleeves, getting down and dirty. So from all the people here in Milltown, Yay! Milltown... Back to you in studio. Now hey, let's get cracking. Come on. Come on. Derek, where's your bag? Where's your green bag, Derek? Oh. He, he's not getting it's down inside. and dirty. He's feeling us all. <laughs> do, do you notice how he gave us the politician's answer? Oh, yeah. Completely ignored yeah. us. Yeah. We Thanks, need to Sarah, know where Derek's green bag is. Anyway, for now, <laughs> let's go over to the Virgin Media News Hub for our first news of the day. Here's Anne O'Donnell. Thanks, Martin. Good morning. Well, the Ulster Bank will be closing its remaining 63 branches in Ireland permanently this evening. The closures will also see ATM services removed from its branch network. Our economics correspondent Paul Calgan reports. In-branch transactions stopped at Ulster Bank's branches at the end of last month. But from today, the shutters will come down on those branches and the ATMs will be switched off. It really has been the long goodbye from Ulster Bank, which along with the Belgian bank, KBC Ireland, have both decided they're getting out of the Republic. This has led to major inconvenience for tens of thousands of Irish customers who've had to switch to the remaining Irish banks. And it poses major questions about the future of Irish banking. How much competition will there be out there when the major banks know that the likes of Ulster and KBC are no longer there to hoover up customers who might be unhappy with the rates that are on offer, who might be unhappy with indeed the savings rates that are on offer. Irish customers have yet to see the benefit of rising interest rates when it comes to their savings, yet they're having to pay more on their mortgages. These will be issues that will be within the Irish banking system for years to come. A 24-hour national slowdown day has come into effect across the country today. Gardaí say the operation is to remind drivers to comply with speed limits. So far this year, there have been 52 fatalities on Irish roads, an increase of three on the same day last year. Actor Alec Baldwin's charges of involuntary manslaughter are being dropped by prosecutors in the US. That's according to his lawyers. Well, it comes following the fatal shooting of a cinematographer, Helena Hutchins, on the set of the Western film Rust two years ago. The director was also injured during the incident. Gunfire could be heard in the early hours of this morning in the Sudanese capital of Khartoum. That's just despite reports Sudan's paramilitary forces has agreed to a 72-hour ceasefire this morning. An estimated 330 people are now known to have died amid the fighting. Black smoke billowing from the Sudanese capital as fighting rages between rival forces. More dense smoke billowing from the international airport in Khartoum. Hundreds of people have been killed and thousands have been injured so far, according to the UN, which also says the death toll is likely to be higher. 
Many residents have not been able to leave their homes since the fighting began last weekend. Shelling and airstrikes seem to have eased from previous days, but residents still report a few explosions. Marie Mulcahy, Virgin Media News. Well, Twitter began purging blue verification check marks from users who have not paid for its subscription service to authenticate accounts. Twitter's owner, Elon Musk, says people who fear other users will impersonate them need to pay an $8 a month verification fee by joining Twitter Blue. And it's time now for an opening look at today's weather forecast with Derek. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Thank you, Anne, and a very good morning. We're coming to you live, Tommy Bjorn, show from the beautiful wee village of Milltown down here in County Kildare, a population of about 400, and we're getting involved in their spring clean later on this morning. So lots of sweeping, lots of planting, and lots of painting coming your way this Friday morning. So do hang with us for that. Anyway, let's take an opening look at weather together now with Adam Fraser with us on cameras once again, and you'll be glad to hear that ridge of high pressure hanging on with us, keeping conditions nice and dry, nice and set. We have beautiful sunrise onto the east coast and in fact some really nice sunshine to kickstart the day now in those moderate to locally fresh northeasterly winds. Now, right across the day, unfortunately conditions will slip a little bit because we're going to see that cloud cover build up from the south right across Munster through parts of the Midlands in across Leinster and into Southern Continent. Now, the further north we go, in fact, take a look at the map because that's where we're going to see the best of the sunshine out there today and in fact the warmest of those temperatures will lie across Ulster. We're talking high of about 12 to 16 degrees. So across into tonight holding mainly dry and clear across the north into the northwest elsewhere underneath that cloud cover the further south we think we're going to see some patchy light rain and drizzle edging its way into your Saturday morning with values back to a 3 to 7 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up here in a sunny and settled mill town here in County Kildare. We'll be back again live at 7.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Now stay with us. We're looking at the stories making the front pages after this quick break. Let's check on your morning paper, starting with the Irish Times. They lead with abortion law review to recommend sweeping changes. The paper reports that a review into the state's abortion law is set to recommend changes to the waiting period to access termination medication and to the granting of abortions in the case of fatal fetal abnormalities. Over to the Irish Examiner, which leads with Boy 15 guilty of violent sex attack on street. It writes that teenager who carried out a violent sex attack on a young woman in Cork City two years ago was yesterday found guilty guilty at the Cork Circuit Criminal Court. On the front page of the Irish Independent uh, is the headline, Kinahan Cartel flees to Iran to evade Gardaí and the FBI. The paper writes that cartel boss Daniel Kinahan is believed to have fled Dubai and relocated to try and avoid extradition. On to the tabloids now, and the Herald also leads with the Kinahan story, going with the headline, Kinahan's go on Tehran from Feds. It, it writes that Kinahan is believed to have relocated to Iran following fears that authorities in the United Arab Emirates would hand him over to US authorities or on guard the Shikana. The Irish Mirror leads with Jerry's zig and zag route. Uh, the paper claims that Jerry Hutch is planning to travel to Spain to manage the 10 million euros worth of assets he has there following his acquittal for the murder of David Byrne last Monday. Also discussing the hitch story is Irish Daily Star, which opens with the headline, Monks Cost a Living Hike. The paper sources claim that Hutch will travel through Eastern Europe en route to Spain to, quote, avoid a bullet. The Irish Daily Mail leads with higher prices are here to stay. The paper reports that Taoiseach Leo Varadkar has warned that the high cost of living could be here to stay as his proposed new tax rate of 30% is believed to be unlikely to materialise. And finally, the Irish Sun opens with, on the headline Baldwin in clear over movie death. The paper writes that actor Alec Baldwin was last night cleared of manslaughter just two weeks before going to trial following the death of a cinematographer after a gun Baldwin was handling misfortune fired on the set of new cowboy film, Rust. 
Joining us now with the latest on this morning's top stories, our political correspondent with the Irish Daily Mirror, Louise Byrne, and deputy political editor with the Irish Independent and Sunday Independent, Hugh O'Connell. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good to see you both. Yeah, well, we'll start with the Ulster Bank. So, you know, after listening to the radio ads and the TV ads and the newspaper ads, Today is the day, Louise, when the doors will shut. Yeah, and a sad day, I'm sure, for a lot of customers and a lot of staff, is worth noting, because yeah. especially branches, you know, they are such part of community in some places. But yeah, and the Irish Independent reporting this morning that 63 branches are closing across the country today, but a lot of people still have their accounts open, their warning as well. Um, as of last month, 170,000 Ulster Bank and KBC, who they're also leaving the market, account holders still had their accounts open and some 60,000 of those are people's primary accounts so the accounts they get their salary into their pension that their bills go out of so I think it's going to be a cause for a lot of people now to get that last push and try to get those accounts closed. And do we know if the 60,000 that number are vulnerable customers maybe the older customers or will they have help and guidance on how to close them do you know? Yeah it's very likely and that's what I think Ulster Bank are saying is that they are going to be putting in supports for those more vulnerable customers and um, perhaps the ones that can't access the online services yeah. so the phone services will be there for those people but I think it is important to remember those people in all of this because oftentimes it is the older people who go into branches a lot more and who do rely on that service yeah. so Ulster Bank have said that they will be supporting those people which I'm sure will be welcomed. Yeah, yeah Hugh this is going to be qu quite a day and and the expected rush Despite yeah. the ads and I the know. campaigns, yes. people will leave it till the last minute. A lot minute. of people leave it till the last minute. I mean, I, I was with Ulster Bank, um, or we were with, were with Ulster Bank, we, we had an account there and we closed it last year. Um, but yeah, a lot of people didn't get around to it, um, didn't want to. I mean, it, it was a hassle. You got to check, you got to move all your direct debits. Uh, yeah. You know, you got to inform your employer if it's your primary account that you don't pay your way. So there's a lot of rigmarole that you have to go through. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that there's thousands of people that haven't done it. And as Louise says, you know, elderly and vulnerable customers in particular. Um, you know, might not have the means by which to do yeah. it or, or, or that, but and this is now going to be a problem for them with the fact that the branches yeah. are closing. But yeah. they can't say they didn't yeah. warn us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, no, the, 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 the ad campaigns have been running for quite a while. Yeah. I mean, let's move on because yeah. uh, Leo hasn't, ha hasn't given us the best of news today. On the front page of the Irish Daily Mail, we're told that high prices here are here to stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's, he's just kind of setting expectations in terms of the, the budget coming up in, in September and October. Uh, or September or October, I, I think Leo Riker is, is kind of saying, look, the, the high prices are here to stay. Uh, we're dealing with inflation for the rest of this year, possibly into next year as well. Um, but he's saying as well that we're, we can look forward to income tax uh, reductions and, and welfare increases in the budget, which we've now kind of got used to over the last uh, few years. They're sort of inbuilt within the system. And we saw earlier in, in the week the massive budget surpluses were running, which I think gives the government a lot of leeway to... Uh, give people money into their pockets, um, which was something they did last um, last autumn and winter, which yeah. proved reasonably popular with voters. They soon forgot about it, I suppose. Um, but I, I think we're going to be seeing more of that and the speculation. We're, Louise and I were just talking about it off air, like the speculation starts now. So the, the demand for what's in the budget is, is going to begin, yeah. Yeah. begin almost immediately with this. Mm -hmm. But they're talking about a 15% increase generally across foodstuffs and an average of about 1,200 per household mm. extra being spent. That's like 25 euro a week. I think that's being kind. Mm -hmm. Probably is, and I think I think a lot more people never are actually saying it to me. People who never would have commented before that they are noticing a difference, especially in yeah. the supermarket. So I think the pressure is going to be on. And like you said, we saw a huge surplus forecast at the beginning of the week. It's twenty six billion over a two year period. So it's a huge amount of money. So I think they will be feeling the pressure now to spend it, cover the budget. Now sources. I will point out, giving out to me already for asking about the budget, <laughs> but they're saying in the same breath, you know, um, don't be expecting this huge budget. Um, and I think Michael McGrath said it at a press conference I was at the other day, said we had this huge big budget last year. It was 11 billion euro with a load of one-off measures, but inflation was running really high. Inflation is expected to kind of come down a lot between now and October. So there might not be the big giveaway that people are expecting. The Taoiseach also said yesterday that we have a lot of debt. Um, when I was asking him about this 30% tax rate and is that something that might be coming down the line. He kind of tempered expectations by saying we have a lot of debt. So I think it's going to be a long summer of speculation for the yeah. budget. Yeah, I think the debt is something around 50, 55,000 euro per person mm. in the country because it's 250 billion euro in mm. total. But that's worth yeah. remembering, I suppose, in the context of all of this. We still, it's a legacy from the financial crisis 15 years ago, this huge national debt that we're running. And it increased quite substantially, I think, by about 20, 30, 40 billion 
uh, during COVID. So it is worth remembering in all of this, I suppose. But that's, as Louis says, the expectations will be set now. We have this budget surplus. Uh, people expect that that will go towards alleviating some of the things that are problematic in this country, not least housing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Moving on, uh, we have both the Independent and the Mayor. Jerry Hutch seemed to have left Ireland. Hugh? Yeah, he, uh, well, it, it looks like he's going to leave. Uh, he's going to go to the continent to, to, to try and uh, take a look at some of uh, his reputed 10 million euro in, in assets there. Uh, it's thought that he might flee to Spain. It was thought, actually, that he would go to Spain almost immediately after he was released on Monday, but... Uh, we've seen, obviously, there's been pictures across yeah. the papers in recent days that he's been out and about. He's got a haircut, he's had a shave. Um, Needed. <laughs> yeah, he's probably getting a few bits uh, before he goes He goes abroad, as, as everyone would. So um, that's uh, what we're, what's, what's expected, I suppose, in, in the next few days or in the next few weeks that, that he'll, he'll get out of the country because, obviously, it's the, the, there's this um, overarching thing of the, you know, the feud yeah. maybe in abeyance. But no doubt there's a, there's a target on his head. Uh, Louise, according to to the Mirror today, Zig and Swag, he's, um, he's taking a scenic route. Yeah, and I suppose this is, as my colleague John Hand was reporting this morning, it is kind of in an effort to take, distract, I suppose, the people who are on the lookout for him. So he could be going to places like Bulgaria, Romania. He could be even crossing back on himself, sources were telling John, um, to you know, just trying to get the track off him or get the trace off him, I suppose. Um, and then eventually he will end up in Spain. Or actually, as John was reporting, he could actually even end up in North Africa, whereas you're kind of close to the continent, but you're that little bit further yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's worth remembering with the Hutches and probably with the Kinnahans as well, um, the best laid plans, I think, change at the last minute if people get a whiff of them. So. And are the Kinnahans the same now? They're en route to Iran, yeah. they're already there. So the Irish Independent are reporting this morning, so they're saying that Daniel Kinnahan has left Dubai and has moved to Iran um, to, as a safe haven. Um, yeah. I was saying earlier, it's not very often you hear Iran described as a safe haven, but I suppose in the Kinnahan case, um, it's about the extradition laws and perhaps he can't be extradited back to Ireland um, because of course there are arrest warrants out um, and in America as well there are arrest warrants out for him so he also has that target on his back so I think he's trying to avoid that and I think the Hutch case um, and Hutch being acquitted earlier mm -hmm. in the week kind of puts that extra pressure on as well. Mm -hmm. And he was paying like corrupt officials in Dubai that's probably expired allegedly, now. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. So do you think allegedly he'd be doing the same in, in Iran? Well, we wait and see, but I mean, we know that the, you know the tensions between the U.S. and Iran going back 50 years uh, mean that the, you know there's no formal uh, diplomatic links there. I think yeah. really, and certainly no extradition treaty. So it, it is, as Louise says, not widely considered a safe haven, but it would be from American authorities who are obviously after him. And we, we heard about that big crackdown last year on, on that. So, um, and I think the issue with Dubai is that increasingly there are some criminals or alleged criminals in Dubai who've been extradited to the United States. So they want to obviously get away from, from yeah. that. Okay, uh, Okay. but the suggestion is that, that they've already made that move. Yes, and, indeed. And yeah, that's what's United reported in the Irish Independent. Already in Iran. Yeah. Um, Elon Musk, Hugh, is in the yeah. news very much. Um, is it today that everybody loses their blue ticks? Um, they've that's gone. Nice. Yeah, but gone. both Louise and I, I think, uh, are mourning the loss of our blue ticks. I saw the night. tweet. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. blue tick. Bye-bye, blue tick. <laughs> so, look, we, we're coming to terms with it. We're doing OK. Um, but, I mean, it's the irony of ironies that the uh, his, his big SpaceX rocket takes off yesterday yesterday in Texas and within seconds uh, blows up. It just explodes. I think he had a more technical term for it, but uh, this is something about disassembling yeah, mid that's, that, Yeah, but, but, uh, but they were celebrating that it got off the ground. Yeah. But it didn't get very far. It's extraordinary, the billions of dollars that pumped into this and they celebrate a few seconds in the air. 32 then, kilometers, I think. They just yeah. reached that point and then... Yeah, it's not, it's not remarkable. Well, I mean, I suppose it is remarkably imp impressive to build a rocket, but I mean, it didn't get very far. And no. I think they were almost trying to pass off a failure as a success in yeah. some kind of ways, which I suppose is not something that would necessarily surprise you when it comes to Elon yeah. Musk. But yeah. I think there was something quite poetic about the rocket blowing up and all our blue ticks being taken away <laughs> within a couple of minutes of each other. Justice. Just <laughs> I, I tell you what I did notice yesterday, say. and it wasn't until, of course, you guys start talking about the removal of blue ticks, the amount of Premier League footballers who shut their Twitter accounts, yes. Yes, yeah. Uh, some of them, I was looking last night, Virgil van Dijk, for example, Liverpool defender, he's still on Twitter, but his tick is gone. So it's extraordinary to see all these celebrities, worldwide celebrities yeah. with millions of followers who are unverified now. It's kind of bizarre, yeah. you know, but that's that's what, what's happening. And I think now not having the blue tick is almost the badge of honour as opposed mm. to having it. I mean, it used to be that, you know, if you had the blue tick, you were 
It's yeah. cool. Yeah, I was kind of looking. I was kind of looking at people who yeah. who still had their blue tick last night, and oh, I'm not quite saying I was judging them, but I was <laughs> I a little think bit. Everybody's <laughs> judging the people who still have blue ticks. <laughs> anyway, good to see you both. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. Thanks a lot. Okay. After the break, are you hoping to get your NCT or driving test done in the next few months? You might want to hear what we've got to say. insurance, van insurance, or home insurance. Call the Quote Devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Yes, and the village spring clean is well underway here in Milltown in County Kildare. We're getting past 7.30. We'll give you a quick update on how it's shaping up and it is drawing settled out there this morning. In fact, some nice bright spells on the breakfast menu, although that cloud is beginning to build now across the south in those light to locally moderate uh, to fresh northeasterly winds. Now, right across the day, in fact, it looks like quite a cloudy one. We're saying bye-bye to the sunshine for now, especially uh, through Munster southern Connacht in across uh, parts of Leinster. Further north we go, that's where the best of uh, that sunshine will lay out there today to the northwest as well. Top 10 to 12 to 16. And finally then to the clear skies across northern areas elsewhere, it will be quite cloudy with some patchy uh, light rain and drizzle to take us through into your Saturday morning with values back to about 3 to 7 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up for now. We'll be back again live at 8. Are you due to have your NCT completed soon? Well, you could be waiting for half a year and it's a similar story if you're hoping to get a driving test. Uh, with us to go through the reasons for the current motoring back backlog and see what the future might hold is transport commentator Connor Foughton. Good to see you, Connor. Morning, guys. Hi. OK, so what's the problem with the NCT? Why the backlog? Well, it's a mess, isn't it? Um, look, the quick version is the pandemic. Yeah. During the pandemic, obviously, all NCTs stopped. Couldn't argue with that. They had to stop. Um, that meant that there's a huge backlog baked into the system. And really, they've never cleared the backlog. So when we emerged out of pandemic, started testing again, they're actually going at a fair rate. They're testing at more or less the appropriate rate but they haven't put a dent in the backlog. There's still over 300,000 vehicles in the queue and they have been desperately trying. Their big problem is getting mechanics and technicians. Yeah. Yeah. They can't do it. They've been a huge recruitment drive since January. They just haven't been able to do it. They were looking in Spain. They were looking in the Philippines, trying to recruit technicians and, and it, they are desperately, desperately short of them. So that's a top line reason. But now what if, like, let's say there's an instance on the road and you're stopped by the, the guard or, or whichever, can you still use the pandemic as an excuse? Um, what view does the On Guard Shikana or even insurance companies have on that if you have an expired NCT? Yeah, well, I think the guards and insurance companies have been really sensible about it, Katja, and they have been since the, the validity of the tests was... The validity of the certs was extended during the pandemic. Um, but at the moment, if you are in the queue to get your NCT and you have your appointment yeah. and your car's in good order. If you smoke vomiting out the back of it, now that's a different matter, right? <laughs> but if the car is fine and you're in the queue for the NCT, then there is no effect on your insurance and no problem with the Gardaí. Uh, but as I say, it, it remains your responsibility to keep the car in good, or good order. But if you don't have an NCT just because you're stuck in the queue, then you don't have a problem with the insurance company. Yeah. But of course, it's totally unsatisfactory. Mm -hmm. We can't be carrying on with half a million cars waiting to be tested. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it is absolutely crazy. But even though, like, I, I like my, my car is, is nearly five years old, so mm -hmm. I had to get an NCT yesterday. Yeah. Very smooth when you get there. It's Once very you're in, it's very smooth. In fact, I have people say to me, what's this crisis? I had an NCT appointment. It was brilliant. You know, the lads were great. There was no particular... It, yeah. it all just seemed very smooth. It is once you're in the queue. But if you go onto the website now and you say, OK, I need an NCT, the computer could give you a, a, an appointment that's seven, eight months away and you're looking at this going, oh, my God. To be fair to the RSA and Aplus, who are the company who run it, they mm -hmm. dynamically manage the queue. So if you've got an urgent need for it, for example, you mm -hmm. can contact them, they'll try and facilitate you, get you an earlier slot. The other thing is there's an awful lot of wasted capacity out there. Uh, people turn up unprepared for the test. Mm -hmm. So they turn up, they don't do a damn thing with the car. They say, do you know what, I'll let it go through and it, 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 if it fails, they'll tell me what to fix and if it passes, great. And what that means is that an awful lot of cars pass for silly reasons, which means they need a fresh test slot, which takes capacity out of the system, which worsens the backlog. Okay, so we'll prep the car before you go in. Oh, OK. okay. And, and it's, not a, it's not a difficult prep. It's oil, water, 
tyre pressure and lights. It's yeah. not that hard. As I say, yeah. we, we, we tend to treat it very, very badly. We use the NCT instead of maintenance. I'd, I'll brush my teeth today because I'm going into the dentist for a checkup. <laughs> exactly. That'll do me for a year. <laughs> so keep the car properly and it should pass the NCT without a difficulty. Yeah. OK, but, but, but I, I hear what you say because, you know, you could be seven or eight months waiting for that yes. test. Mm. But you can just click a button that says please put me in line on for a cancellation. cancellation list yeah and to be fair to the to the RSA they're doing the best they can to get the most they can out of the capacity a couple of things really frustrate them one is no shows it amazes oh. me that that happens yeah these that's days, quite frustrating just don't show up. yeah especially with uh, the list going yeah, on now exactly yeah. and we talk about how rude it is to be a no show in a restaurant for example mm -hmm. uh, it, it's also rude here and it, and it takes capacity out of the system makes the problem worse for everybody else and the only one is the one we talked about in not making any effort to prepare the car if if one bulb is blown and a tire is flat and there's smoke coming out the back you know, you don't need to be a genius to know that this car needs a bit of treatment before it goes through. Yeah. But the human tendency is to say, you know, I'll use it as a diagnostic. It, I'll fix whatever it tells me to fix and I don't have to worry about anything else. And that's just a terrible culture of car maintenance. It's your responsibility to keep the car in good order, oh, NCT or not. Absolutely. Um, and with the number of the backlog, it's 300,000 now, which of course is high, but it's better than it was before. Is that right? Yeah, it is. I mean, it has come down a little bit. It's still very wasteful, Katia. And, you know, to be Carrying that degree of a backlog, the pandemic excuse is wearing a bit thin. Yeah. As far as, yeah. You know, we're a year gone now. Yeah. Time they got their act together. But they do in total conduct 1.5 million tests per annum, if you include retests. So, you know, that's a huge number. Yeah. And to be fair to Aplos and the NCT overall, it's actually a very good system. Mm -hmm. It's much better than the British system. It's it, stands comparison with most other systems in Europe. The number of complaints is actually relatively tiny. So, you know, if they got over this backlog problem, yeah. it, it, you know, it, it'd be much less frustrating. Uh, we are running out of time. The other backlog problem is with driving tests. Yes. I can't get one. I mean, I'm on the waiting list. And what was interesting is that I put in a location and the date for my test, estimated date, was the 25th of December. Um, Christmas oh, Day. Uh, Christmas Day That'll this year. And then, and then I changed the location and I got one for September. So it's it's kind of tricky for people, especially in Dublin. I think the number, the yeah. backlog in Dublin is so it's high. Massive. A lot of people are telling, you know, learner drivers to go test in Dundalk or whatever. Yeah, or wherever. Mace or whatever it yeah. is. And there's a fair bit of that goes on. It's a similar story, similar backlog backlog, but it's a better story in that they're getting through it faster, they're getting on top of it faster. The other thing is that, as with the NCT, they're actually very good on the dynamic management, and I know this firsthand. Credit the RSA for that. So if you've got, say, for example, you've got a job offer that might be contingent on you having a yeah. drive or something, if you explain that to them, they will find you a cancellation slot. They, so they will get you tested mm -hmm. early. You can also put yourself on the list for cancellations. Now, that can shock people because, you know, you get a, an email that says, right, you're in tomorrow. And you go, oh, my <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Might be the best thing, might be the best way to do it. So th they are very good that way. But in the broader sense, if you're just in the queue again, there's a very long queue, it's too long, and the pandemic as an excuse is, is too old at this stage. So middle of next year, we're hoping to see that clear up. Well, middle of this year, we were middle supposed to see it clear yeah, up. Well, it just hasn't been Is, hasn't is been the queue any yet. shorter if you're looking for a retest? For, for a driving test? Yeah, for no, a driving same test. Same queue, I'm afraid. It, it's a shorter queue for a retest on the NCT because often they don't ah, yeah. need a test lane. Uh, but to actually get the driving test done, no, I'm afraid the, the queue but is the queue. But they'll tell you the average wait is only four or five weeks, even if you go onto the website and it'll give you a much longer waiting period than that. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a hurry, tell them. And, and if you're not in a hurry, go ahead and get yourself in the queue so that by the time it comes around. Uh, and of course, Katya, let us all know how you get Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Bring a I camera. I telling yeah. anyone. Yeah. We, we want to see. I think a couple of live cameras following <laughs> the camera. Probably good. Just <laughs> set up a few <laughs> around the dash. Just to see how you get you know. Connor, good to see <laughs> you. Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Uh, up next, a tough night for David De Gea and Manchester United as they crashed out of the Europa League in Seville. Sports coming up next. Early risers. Yeah. The early riser. Do we look as if we're happy that we're up early? <laughs> uh, anyway.
Coming up, made in Chelsea hit by Ollie Lockers, chatting hidden magic and what to expect when you're expecting. We'll lots of sleep. Oh, uh, lots yeah. Of sleep. Lots of sleep, of course. And we'll be looking ahead to this year's Darkness into Light Walk with former Pieta patient turned volunteer. After nine, we'll have some expert advice for women on how to ensure your pelvic health is up to scratch. And stylist Rosalind Lipset joins us this morning. And of course, we're off to the races, aren't we? Good morning, Katia. <laughs> yes, we are with all the race meetings coming up, starting with Punch and Style next week. We have some fabulous looks that are going to turn heads in the crowd. So we are starting off with some amazing headpieces from Mark Millinery. The, ten the devil is in the detail with our jewellery today from the new collection, straight off the run ways of Betty and Biddy. We have these beautiful oh. dresses from Pamela Scott and Club L London. And let's not forget, we need comfy shoes from Chenille Shoes. Absolutely. You'll be turning heads with that. Yeah. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that, Martin. All right. We all are. Yeah. Day at the races in the best of gear. Absolutely. Derek's braving the elements this morning. What's happening, Derek? <laughs> Ah, Martin, it's a beautiful, beautiful morning <laughs> out is. there here. Welcome down to Milltown in County Kildare. We're going to be kicking off our clean-up. Uh, Sir, what are we doing down here? Uh, this morning, Derek, we're just going to spread out along the canal bank and just give it a bit of a spruce up. Um, it's, it's already in good nick, isn't it? it? It's always in good nick, um, but it's important to keep on top of things. It's our main amenity in the village, so we, we need to keep on top of it. All right, so we've got the bags, we've got the pickers, lads, on standby. We're going to be kicking off our clean-up here this morning. Back to you in studio. All right, sir, let's go. Now he found his green bag. He, he got his bag, he's got his picker-upper, <laughs> and he's ready to go. Getting dirty. Right, thanks, Derek. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Yes, thank you very much, and the clean-up is well and truly underway down here in Milltown Village in County Kildare. We're going to be catching up with some of the local Tidy Towns crew in and around 8.45 here this morning. A big volunteer effort across the village as well, so that's all to come in the next few while. Quick look at weather now. We're getting past 8 o'clock here together. A stunning start down here in County Kildare, and in fact, lots of you waking up to uh, some nice sunshine now as we edge our way into the weekend, although the cloud begins to build now through southern sections in those uh, moderate to locally fresh northeasterly winds. Now, right across today, that northeasterly airflow and the driving seat in behind it, we're going to see that cloud extend up across the southern half of the country. So, in across Cart, Leinster, Munster, sunshine is slipping. The further north we go, we're going to see some uh, decent rays out there today through the northwest. Uh, Donegal, Ulster looking pretty good. Top temps uh, will be around 12 to 16 degrees, and the warmest of those valleys, uh, the further north we go. Finally then tonight good clear skies uh, across uh, northern areas the further south we think once again that cloud cover hanging on with us bringing with it some patchy drizzle as we edge our way into tomorrow morning with values back to a 2 to 7 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up here in a sunny Milltown in County Kildare we'll be back again live at 8.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. It's been very busy. That canal bank is so, so clean. Yeah, and can I say the sun is shining. Yes. I am so we, happy we to see we it. We deserve a bit of good. Yeah, yeah. Certainly. Right, let's check on your morning paper, starting with the Irish Times. They lead with abortion law review to recommend sweeping changes. The paper reports that a review into the state's abortion law is set to recommend changes to the waiting period to access termination medication and to the granting of abortions in the case of fatal fetal abnormalities. Over to the Irish Examiner, which leads with Boy 15 guilty of violent sex attack on street. It writes that a teenager who carried out a violent sex attack on a young woman in Cork City two years ago yesterday was found and guilty at the Cork Circuit Criminal Court. On the front page of the Irish Independent is the headline Kinnahan Cartel flees to Iran to evade Gardaí and the FBI. The paper reports that uh, cartel boss Daniel Kinnahan is believed to have fled Dubai and relocated to try and avoid extradition. On to the tabloids now and the Herald also leads with the Kinnahan story going with the headline Kinnigans go on Tehran from feds. It writes that Kinnahan is believed to have relocated to Iran following fears that authorities in the United Arab Emirates would hand him over to US authorities or Angar the Shia Khanna. 
The Irish Mirror leads with Jerry's zig and swag route. Uh, the paper claims that Jerry Hutch is planning to travel to Spain to manage the 10 million euros worth of assets he has there following his acquittal for the murder of David Byrne last Monday. Also discussing the Hutch story is the Irish Daily Star, which opens on the headline, Monks Cost a Living Hike. The paper sources claim that Hutch will travel through Eastern Europe en route to Spain to, quote, avoid a bullet. The Irish Daily Mail leads with higher prices here to stay. The paper reports that Taoiseach Leo Varadkar has warned that the high cost of living could be here to stay as his proposed new tax rate of 30% is believed to be unlikely to materialise. And finally, the Irish Sun opens on the headline Baldwin in clear over movie death. The paper writes that actor Alec Baldwin was last night cleared of manslaughter just two weeks before going to trial following the death of cinematographer after a gun Baldwin was handling misfired on the set of new cowboy film Rust. Now still to come, Made in Chelsea star Ollie Locke is in the house. Stay with us. Welcome back. Our next guest made his name on Made in Chelsea, but he has far more sides to him than uh, the hit scripted reality show. TV personality and author Ollie Locke has now turned his hand to children's books with the release of The Faraway Adventures of Henry Boggett, Henry and the Great White Whale. And he's also expecting twins. Uh, Sounds like you've been, you've been busy. It's a busy year. <laughs> it's been a cu busy couple of years. We're only this four months a... in, Ollie. I, I know, tell me about it. It's, it's, but it's got a bit mental. I now, well, tell us about this book. It's been it's released on the 25th of April. Yeah, on Tuesday, yeah. And what's um, this series about? So this is the first of the series. It's about a little boy who finds magic in London uh, by realising that the blue plaques in the wall are actually portals back into the world of whatever author or musician or whatever. And the first one is going back to Moby Dick's world um, in wow. 1851. Wow. OK, so, so through this... You go into their world. Yeah. You do realise A and E is probably going to be full of kids now who will be running headfirst <laughs> at blue. Like Thanks. platform nine and three quarters, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it doesn't. If, yeah, JK did it all right. Like, 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 yeah. No one running into <laughs> nine and three quarters. But, 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 but did, are, are, are these the kind of stories that used to fascinate you when you were a child? I think growing up in London, it was one of those blue plaques on the walls where someone lived was always a magical situation. You look and you go, yeah. oh my God, I couldn't believe that people were... But people lived in those spaces and came up with the most ama amazing stories or whatever. So I was like, yeah, there's something there. Yeah. So I decided to um, to make it into a portal back into their world. But it, there is a huge difference from your first book, obviously, Laid in Chelsea, yes. which was such a hit, to now children's books. And they have that same, like, magical tone, like your very first one as well. Like, it's quite similar. Uh, is that definitely the route you want to go down on now, especially becoming a dad. You're going to be a dad, you know, in a couple of months' time. So this is going to be yeah. special to share with the kids. Well, I think that's the most enjoyable part, is that being a father to be soon, um, the idea of, of magical stories at bedtime is something that I think is is just amazing. Imagine having that, 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 that moment with your parent before you go to bed, before you go into the land of Nod, like this amazing kind of um, a, a fantasy, a, an adventure before you go to bed and go to sleep is gorgeous. I think it's very underrated, children's bedtime it, stories. It also gives your child the, the fascination with reading and the want to read as they grow up too. Well, I think that was part of it, the idea that you can... Old-school literature is... If you ever try to re read Moby Dick, it's the most difficult book I've <laughs> ever tried to read in my life. It's, yeah. Not only is the, is the English very different, but it's... It's, it's but giving a child some sort of old English literature kind of feeling. Is just, you're almost it's thanking special. your parents, like when you're growing up, and like thank God we covered that early. Absolutely you know? right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but you know, a whale swallowing you up. You know, it, yeah, yeah it, it, it's not really going to send you off to sleep. So you need to find the happy point before Absolutely you say, right. and that's enough for. Today. Well, Henry always gets involved. This is the first of them, but it's going to they're going to be out every April and every October for the foreseeable future, and the next mm. one again, you go into the world. So he always becomes the protagonist in all the stories. So he becomes a part of the original story. OK. Um, let's talk about you becoming a dad, because you know, you're wearing the jumper today. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you are clearly looking forward to it, but it hasn't been an easy mm -hmm. journey, shall we say. No, it's been three and a half years of IVF. It's our fourth round of IVF. Uh, there's been a lot of heartbreak going from Mexico to Cyprus to London. The laws 
not yeah. only in Ireland but yeah. in, in England is very archaic and very old school and, and something that needs to be um, looked at at some point very soon. They, the English laws haven't changed in 35 years and I know the Irish laws are especially difficult as well when it yeah. comes to men um, having babies. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think it's so important that you have been so public with this journey and you're, you're sharing your story because I'm sure there are many couples in your um, situation that are going through the same struggle. Have you had anyone reach out and, you know, totally resonate with you? I think one of the most wonderful things is that the community behind um, Instagram and stuff like that, there are people that I'm friends with now that are going through the problem, not only in in London, in Ireland, in everywhere, Brian Dowling uh, yes. and yeah has gone through it recently, yeah. and yeah. and and it's 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 super interesting the whole process. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, very much uh, have this community behind us all on Instagram that are going through the same thing. Okay. Uh, while you were going through this IVF, yeah. and there were a couple of miscarriages that happened. Yeah. So, so so you have a surrogate, and yourself and your husband Gareth yeah. were hitting that grief point. Yeah. And it's, it, it's tough, you know, my, my father will be four years dead tomorrow. So this day four years ago was the last time I spoke to him. So, I, but I have a memory of that. And I have a place to go uh, this weekend where I can pay tribute to him. Yeah. Whereas when, when you lose a child to miscarriage, there, there are no memories and there's no place to go. So was writing the book a, a means of therapy for you? You know what, that's, that's so interesting you say that because yes, I think it probably was. And it was, again, we, we were talking earlier, but it's, it's the it's it's the idea that you can that you can have that fantasy and that and that adventure with a child, and going through the stories and stuff like that is something that is so. Much, and it was it was it was in a weird way going through the portal is is lots of metaphors in lots of mm. way, and it's it's yeah. it's, it's um yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 interesting you say that it's mm. magical. Yeah. And it has been a crazy journey, but how is the prep going? Are the nurseries finished yet? Had the clothes, <laughs> everything, so many clothes. Well, the, the, the clothes are the issue. My husband's worked in fashion for an awfully long time doing all, kind of, all sorts of things. And, uh, and yes, I'm afraid that we've gone to lots of shops and our wardrobe <laughs> is better than mine at the moment. Uh, and it's a boy and a girl, so we've oh, literally... So we literally... So, we point, so literally, the, the madness of the clothing yeah. is obscene. See, it's so um, much more fun when you're shopping for the baby clothes. Uh, that's where all yes. our money goes. <laughs> it literally on baby clothes at the moment. We haven't even thought about nurseries yet. We need to sort that out fairly quickly. But yeah, it's um, it's amazing. Just, just wait, you have to make the first car journey when you're dropping them off somewhere to be babysat. And you need to put in the double buggy and the travel cots. And, yeah, and you realise we need a van. The research <laughs> right now going into which are the lightest, which are the best, which are the, it's, it's just wild. But I think we'll get there. As any parent doesn't know what they're doing at the beginning. And I think yeah. you have to, you can read as many yeah. books as you want, but you have to try and get there as soon as you can. Yeah. But we'll, yeah. We're getting there. Field work. Yeah. But I do wonder now, like just going through so many life changes, and, and your life has been public. I'm made in Chelsea. You met your best friend Binky. You obviously met Gareth as well, and shared your journey with that on there. Like, does it ever feel strange, you know, going out in public and people probably coming up to you like they know you, like they're like your friend, like Ollie, like first name basis. I, th I think that's that was that was yeah, very much the si has been the situation for 13 years. So yeah. I, 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 don't, I really don't know anything else. Yeah. Um, and it's funny when, when I don't know, you open the door somewhere and someone goes, hi, Ollie, and you literally like, oh, hiya, and you don't even <laughs> think about it. And it's, it's bizarre, it's a weird world. But you are putting your life on camera. Yeah. Every moment we found out our first miscarriage happened on camera, yeah. and I just said, keep rolling. And it's a weird situation, yeah. but we said that before, whatever the situation, no, it's going to be a yes or a no or a whatever, yeah. but we just keep rolling, because that's what you want to... It's no, real. That, that's you're, you're putting your life for the uh, audience. Well, well we're, 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 we're looking at some of these images and some happy images and some great images. Um, but you're going to step away from this for a while to be a daddy. Mm. Uh, yes, for a reason. Um, but I will be... I, you're not closing the say, door, shall we say. I'm certainly not closing the door on Maiden Chelsea, but I would be surprised if there wasn't cameras as soon as the babies are born in whatever right. platform that will be on. Oh. Ah, right, OK. So you are, I feel like you're teasing something for us, right? There will be, there will be something, but it might not be Made in Chelsea, but it might be something else that, that um, cameras will be there and, <laughs> and people can follow that journey. I, I, we're really excited for you, we really are. And, you, you, like, your face lights up when you talk about your babies. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. And it's gorgeous to see. Um, let's talk about your, your time in Ireland, because you're a regular visitor. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've become a regular, which I adore. I've, I've fallen in love with not only the Irish, but, that, but Dublin, I just I adore. Like, I, just, I, I have a wonderful time here, and people 
people are so friendly, like really, really kind. In London, you're in a, a hard world. You're in the tube and everyone kind of sits there doing this. But in Ireland, people go, come here, like, come in, have a drink. Like, it's, it's fabulous. And you spent Christmas here. What was that like? I, yeah, well, that was just wonderful. It was just great fun. Yeah, well, Was it wonderful or was it an accident? Did you mean to go home, but you just didn't get there? Well, yeah, well, certainly, uh, yeah, I came with my dogs as well and we, had, like, we just had the most incredible time. And it's like, like I don't know, uh, Christmas in Ireland is something quite special as well. I mm. think it's quite, um, quite lovely. And I must admit, you guys know how to drink. Oh, There's... We, we do enjoy a party. Mm -hmm. There is something that I had, I went to, I went to Keogh's and had, uh, and had my Guinnesses and had a wonderful time. We had some great <laughs> fun, I really enjoyed it. No, we don't get the snow, but we have that magic. It is. And, and we pour a good pint. Well, that is true. <laughs> I've never understood that Guinness spends about four minutes on the side before you have it. You're dying for a drink it and suddenly... It needs to settle, Ollie. It has yeah. to settle. Yeah. But, and in London, it's about a minute. But in, in Ireland, it's about four minutes. You're like, crumbs, give me the drink. I, I, <laughs> I feel like people could write a whole thesis on that, you know? Absolutely <laughs> right. I imagine point. they probably could. <laughs> but, Ollie, we do wish you the absolute best. I mean, it's, it's so exciting. You have such an exciting year ahead. And, of course, with the release of this but, book, let's show the artwork. It, this it is, is gorgeous. And, it? and the, the next one is out in October. Yeah, absolutely right. So this and one's what's out. That? Where, where, where will Henry be then? Um, ooh, difficult. I'm not going to say too much, but it might well be Charles Dickens. Oh, right. OK. Yeah. So hang on, October, could it be, could it be Oliver Twist? Could it be Scrooge? We don't know. We don't know. Who knows? We will wait and see. Uh, Ali, it's a joy to see. Out. It really is. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, we're very excited for what's for what's happening. When are the babies due? Um, we're twenty weeks today, so we are. Okay, yeah, so the halfway eight. mark. August the eighteenth, if everything's good. Ah, oh, fantastic! Oh, Absolutely. Will they be little Leos? Yeah. Little Leos. Oh, Absolutely right. Oh, yeah. right. Mm. oh yeah. good to see you, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. If you'd like to find out more about the book, The Faraway Adventures of Henry Boggess, Henry and the Great White Whale, is available now at all major bookstores. We'll be right back after this quick break. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance. Call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Yes, thank you very much. And we're continuing on with our cleanup down here in Milltown in County Kildare. We're going to be catching up with some of the Tidy Towns volunteers here uh, as they kick off their national spring clean. So that's all to come in and around 8.45. Anyway, a quick look at weather. It's a dry and settled start out there this morning. Plenty of bright spells now as we edge our way into the weekend, although that cloud cover beginning to build now in those moderate to locally fresh northeasterly winds. Now, right across the day, remember all that glorious sunshine we've had over the last few it is, it is beginning to slip out there today. As that cloud extends up across the country, the best of sunshine, take a look at the map there in around parts of Ulster through the northwest. In fact, that's where the warmest of those temperatures will lie out there today. Top valleys in and around 12 to 16. And finally then tonight, clear skies into northern parts the further south. We think once again cloud cover bringing with it some passing light uh, rain and drizzle. Edging its way into Saturday. In fact, some heavy downpours across the south and into the Midlands for tomorrow with overnight lows. Back to around 2 to 7 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up here in Kildare at the moment. Come back to us live. Lots of work uh, coming your way around uh, 8.45. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Welcome back. A recent study has revealed that 18.5% of Irish people live with a mental illness such as depression or anxiety. On May 6th, mental health charity Pieta will be leading the annual Darkness into Light walk to raise funds for, or for services to help those in need most. We're joined now by therapist Lee Kenny and Darkness into Light volunteer Sean Kinsella, who was availed of Pieta's services himself over the years. You're both welcome to the show. Um, Sean, we're going to start with you. Tell us uh, how, y y how your relationship with Pieta began. Uh, when I started, I suppose I kind of started realising I was struggling. I was kind of, was being at the sport, I got an injury, I couldn't play sport anymore. I was just involved, uh, taking over a family business, which recession hit and I was severely under uh, debt. And I was also in a relationship, was kind of struggling at the time. And I found, like, I was a very strong person at the time when I, when I started kind of the fight for the journey. Mm -hmm. But um, just days after days of fighting, trying to keep a business going and all like that, I started losing sleep. Mm. which made, you know, like, tossing and turning every night. 
and waking up the next morning, going into face work and being tired, you know, making probably bad decisions. And it was just a really tough time. And I kind of a year and a half of going through this and it ended up becoming a totally different person. Mm. A person really? that, you know, I used to keep a diary at the time because for advice I checked online what to do, but I was writing things down as, Sean, get up today and you're gonna be strong and trying to convince myself to put on yeah. a brave face. Yeah. So go to work in a brave face and even anybody around me at the time didn't know I was struggling because I put on this brave face and work and, and stuff. But then when I come home at night on my own, you know, things just yeah. started hitting and got lower and lower. And like then just start having suicidal thoughts. Right. And then one, this house is kind of silly, I was thinking one day in work, I said, I'm going to get over the busy, busy spell now. I'm going to plan to go home and, you know, plan an attempt on my life. And during the attempt, luckily, I kind of woke up six, eight hours later, alive. But even the moment I made it, the attempt, I thought it was, oh, I'm a goner now. Yeah. I kind of regret it. I said, why did I do this? Like, right. Okay. But uh, woke, I said, it's done now. Woke up the next morning, thankfully, and I went to our local hospital just thinking I had to go, but I was still feeling numb and like in a fog and like just like just dull. And in the hospital, um, they kind of were looking after me. And then one of the nurses said to me, are you OK? And I looked at her, what do you think like? Mm -hmm. And she says, oh, I'm going to get you get, get some help. And she came back in. Are you, can you come here next Thursday week? And I said back to her, I won't be here next Thursday week. You know, that's my mentality at the time. I was just there, get through today kind of thing. But I wasn't so the, having the hope. ideation was still going on yeah. in, in your mind at that point. Like even that's the stupidest thing that I'm going to say is what I was keeping me hanging on that day was Liverpool were playing in the Carling Cup final. I said if Liverpool lose today, I'm going to do it. If they win, I you were on, hang edge. On, on edge. Yeah, totally. yeah, and, and especially going through that mental turmoil for so long, and so many people in Ireland struggle with it, and they go back and forth until they finally end up getting some help. So. Do you remember the, the turning point? Was that the turning point after leaving the hospital? The turning point was, I was always looking for help, but I yeah. didn't know where to go. I had tried a therapist and, oh, the therapist kind of made me feel like worse. Yeah. But the, that one thing I learned from Peter House, like when I went to Peter House, I was asked the question after every therapy session, Sean, do you feel like I'm helping you? Mm. And I ended up after section or session five or six asking, why are you keeping asking this question? Mm. And she said, sometimes the therapist doesn't help you. Mm. You know, so okay. that clinged back to the first therapist. Like I should have, if I'd have known that, I would have tried another one. Yeah. But going back then, went to my doctor in Wexford, Dr. Curtis was a good friend, and he suggested Peter House. And I thought Peter House at the time, I never heard of it before. I thought it was kind of going to a hospital, mm. but I was willing to do anything. Yeah. So made the call to Peter House, and the, even the first phone call to Peter House, I felt, you know, Jesus, this is, this, this is where I'm supposed to go. Like. Yeah. Went up, and from at the time, there's only one Peter in, Wex in Ireland, which was Luke, and I'm from Wexford. Mm. So it was a two hour journey to go up. Mm -hmm. And even the journey going up there was because I was getting ready for the session. Mm. Then the session was good, and then coming back, I was kind of, it was really a help because it was five hours therapy, really. Yeah. And um, it just really, within weeks, changed. I was, I kind of learned that, you know, skills of realizing what's not good for me and what. Is and it took me a few weeks of going over and talking about realizing what I had to kind of take out of my life mm. to get on with. And once I started doing that, I became such a stronger person. Like, yeah. Okay, your story goes on, and we will yeah. return to it in a sec. But Lee, let's bring you in here because for somebody in Sean's position who has had these thoughts or um, there might have been an action, what can they expect when they contact PA? We've heard Sean's experience. Sean mentioned that <coughs> as soon as he picked up the phone to ring Pieta, that's when his journey started. Um, and that's very similar to most clients that would main say that when they start picking up the phone. And that's when change starts to happen for them. So what you can expect when you come to Pieta is that um, you'll be treated with absolute dignity and respect and the utmost of compassion. Um, you know, you'll speak to one of our people who will help go through what the next steps are. And they'll take that journey with that person and they'll book them in then for what we call an initial um, appointment with a qualified professional therapist. Mm -hmm. And they'll go through further questions with them to ascertain what can we do to help and where do we need to be in this with this person. And then 
after that then, then they'll start their journey, their therapy journey with the same therapist. Um, so that's a weekly session then for the, at the same time, at the same day, every week. And like what Sean said, we talk about, you know, where your strengths are, building those strengths, putting perspective on life, looking at reasons for living versus reasons for dying, and really being able to sit and hold hope oh. with those people who feel like they just don't have the hope to be able to put one foot in front of the other. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. Um, and it's such a privilege to be able to do that and to be able to talk about the service in this way and to be able to, you know, break down that stigma and absolutely say, it's OK, please reach out. We are all here waiting for you to pick up the phone if there's anybody that, are, that, that resonates with this story today or, you know, we're here, we're 24-7 and we couldn't be, you know, more wanting to help those who are in crisis and who need our help. Yeah. It's an amazing service, it absolutely is. And the fact that it's free, mm -hmm. No referral needed, yeah. um, you know, and like what Sean was saying, you know, back in the day, there was only one centre. We've been able to um, open up many a centre now nationwide. We've been able to provide phone and video therapy so that people don't have to take, if you like, a five hour journey yes, yeah. to be able to get to mm -hmm. a centre. So <clears throat> we have that access barrier free um, set up as well so we've been able to do that so that we can reach more people um, yeah, in yeah. the service. It's so important that way and I, I, I know Sean yourself you had a number of sessions but even midway you already felt the benefits of it and even going through your journey with Pieta you spoke before about your son Jack and his um, mental health struggle and um, you were able to almost empathize with him during his journey explaining that you yourself yeah. sought help like jack was losing jack was a massive surprise to me because i felt i was able to spot it in other people and i have like reached out online when i feel people are struggling and yeah. not always but sometimes i get it right and the person does need help but in jack i didn't see it like we had such a connection of laugh joke and the one thing is he was such a caring person. I like I think he took troubles on himself. Yeah. Like, you know, worrying about maybe me, worrying about his mother, especially even worrying about his friends. Like in, in school, he used to reach out and look after the vulnerable kids and be their friend and be their firm. Like yeah. he was a you know, great person. Jack Jack was a natural leader. Yeah, yeah <clears throat> even on the rugby pitch, like he got man the match in Leinster final, you know, when he was under under thirteen. And uh, just like they were struggling in that match, and he just grabbed the match by the scruff of his neck, and just he yeah. was even on the rugby team. He just he used to never give up. And and seeing know. that from the outside, you'd look like uh, look at someone like Jack and be like, they're thriving. You yeah. know, yeah. you you can't see the struggle. So the one thing is, you know, from he went from a little boy, twelve, kind of thir early thirteen, to a teenager. Like he's even his body changed so much. Like yeah. he looked a kid at twelve, he looked a man at thirteen, fourteen. Wow. And. Uh, do you know the, the change in him? In, I mean, it's going through a lot for a kid at that age. What, what, was there a mood change in him? There was um, <clears throat> a definite mood change, in, and like the alarm bells kind of stay, came off kind of in the week or two before he got an, an anxiety attack one Saturday evening. I was at the Ireland New Zealand match at the time, mm -hmm. and Caitlin, my daughter, rang me and said, I couldn't hear Daddy, Daddy, Jack's gone crazy. Like, what? Mm -hmm. We don't know what to do. So, he had an anxiety attack, like smacking his head, like totally unlike him out of nowhere. Mm. And uh, the next day I was talking to him and he felt embarrassed about the whole thing. But I kind of told him, he never knew about my story. I told him a little bit about it. And I thought, you know, leaving, everything was okay. Next day I bring him to parkour and which he loved. There's videos of him at the parkour with his friends of just being so happy, funny, joking with everybody. <clears throat> that night brought him back to Michelle's and uh, she was talking away, giving him a hug goodbye. Even Michelle said that evening before he went to bed, he hid behind the door and gave her a fright surprise. You're right. Yeah. And then so he was in good form. Yeah. It seemed perfectly okay. So naturally you would think yeah. 12 to 13, there are changes going on. on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, hormonal changes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and you might write some of those things down to that. Yeah. Yeah, and the, I can really believe in... Um, we all have to be honest about our feelings, yeah. <clears throat> every one of us, to our friends and our family especially. And I feel like I was hiding some feelings from Jack, you know, I was having pressure on work, he was picking up on that. Uh, Michelle was having a tough time as well, he was picking up on that, so he was hiding, we were hiding his, our feelings, so he was probably hiding our feelings, or his, his feelings from us, yeah. because he was saying, Mammy and Daddy are being strong, I have to be strong. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's just... It's such a sad story, because Jack was only 13. 
Yes, it's kind of, uh, to me, and I'm, I might be around this, but it's the, I think it's the worst thing that could happen to anybody is oh, losing that, that kid. Like even, I played a lot of sport and got great enjoyment out of sport, but I got way more enjoyment out of seeing Caitlin playing sport or Jack yeah. playing sport yeah. than yeah. anything I ever done in yeah. sport. Like, yeah. you know, I used, I used to cry on the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> Jack used to make fun of me sometimes. <laughs> Daddy, the lads are after telling me. Don't come to the match today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you were volunteered with, yeah. with, with Pieta. Um. Yeah, I felt <clears throat> even I already went 2012, I went to Pieta. I done some talks in private for mm -hmm. journal that he heard that he, and then it just came to a stage where I felt I had to come out and talk public about it. Yeah. Because then people, especially I lost a friend to suicide, who was actually, son was in class with Jack. And I felt if he'd have known my story, maybe he would have been different. So mm -hmm. I started talking more public on radio about it. And then after Jack, I just really came out and said, look, I have to come out. And we talked on radio stations and stuff. And since then, I've been nonstop doing stuff with Peter and raising money and all like that. And I, it's gave us some solace because, and some that we, don't want to see it happening to another parent, and if we can save one, two people from it, and that's yeah. it. That's and, the plan. and darkness into light, which is taking place on the sixth of May. You know, you're going to see a, a lot of families who have been affected. You know, even first-hand, second-hand by um, you know mental health struggles, and it really is going to be a, a nice energy to be with people that you know you can directly relate to. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Darkness into Light has become now a global movement. Um, and we believe that the message that Darkness into Light um, gives out is that standing in solidarity and shoulder to shoulder with everybody who has either lost somebody to suicide, who has had struggles and is struggling with suicidal ideation and self-harm. And we're coming together and we're saying, you're not alone. We're coming together and saying there can be another way. We're coming together and we're saying, you're going to be okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and there is a lot of hope in all of that. And you feel it, you, you know, if you do the walk, you'll feel that. And you'll feel even what you were saying, you know, you're doing something about this. We're breaking down the stigma. We're hopefully paving a way to be able to say, it's okay to reach out and get the help. That's why Pieta is there. That's why Pieta was born in the first place, because it recognises that we need to have a place for somebody to go to, to be able to say, I'm not OK, help me. And that's what we're going to do. And that's what we want to do. So being able to, you know, fundraise and being able to, you know, register for Darkness and Tonight helps us keep our doors open. And it is because of the generosity of the public yeah. that we can do that. I mean, 80% of our fundraising or our funding comes from the generosity of the public. Yeah. And so we rely on that so much to be able to continue to do the work that we do for those that need it the most. Okay. Incredible, incredible movement, Absolutely. you know, and may it continue for, for much longer yet, Lee. Thank you so much, and Sean. And again, I am so sorry for your loss. No problem. Thank um, you very much. Darkness Into Light takes place on Saturday, May 6th, and you can find more details on your local walk at the website darknessintolight.ie. We'll be back after this break. All right. Well, Derek is having a busy day today. Oh, he's been busy. Yeah. He's down by the canal <laughs> and he's tidying the place up. Derek, what's going on? Yeah, absolutely, guys. We're busy bees down here in Milltown Village in County Kildare. Uh, chairperson of the local Tidy Towns Committee, Dan Boland, is with us now. Dan, you kind of fell into the job, didn't you? I did, Derek, yes. There was an existing <laughs> committee here 40 years ago and I kind of fluked it as become chairman. The rest are a very hard-working committee and they've done a wonderful job here, Derek, because there's a lovely circular walk here in Milltown, less than a mile. So if you want to just take a walk down the old Boreen, by the mill, by the canal, very tranquil. Very, very tranquil, very peaceful and very clean, Dan. You've done a great Great job here. Haven't well, you? The, the volunteers have. Without the volunteers, it just simply couldn't work. But they're out here all the time, uh, keeping it clean. And fairness, it's not a huge amount of rubbish, but what is is taken out immediately. Now, the National Spring Cleanup. There's so many local towns, villages, communities across the country taking part in this at the moment, isn't it? They are, yes. All part of the wonderful effort that makes Ireland the great place it is, and in particularly Milltown, where you have a nice local community fully involved and committed to keeping the place clean. And like yourself, and you're cracking the whip here in Milltown. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. No, <laughs> there's very little need to do that because people are genuine 
well, you just didn't have a nice, clean village that we can all enjoy. And, and to showcase to everyone passing through. Now, Betty, you're involved with the Tidy Towns a long time. How, how long are you with them? Uh, oh, I suppose over 20 years, but uh, I've been more involved in the heritage of the place. Yeah, and this place, uh, you can see from the shots that we have on air, this place steeped in history and heritage. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we're here in Milltown, Valle on Willen town of the mill so we have the mill there and we're at the uh, the the end of the hill of allen the famous hill of allen and finn mccool that mill just over my shoulder any plans to restore it betty well not in the immediate future but hopefully it would take uh, quite a few million pounds to to do a good job on it but it would be a super thing to have it would and you have that lovely loop walk just along the feeder canal along the canal and of course the canal goes back to the 1780s that canal was built and it was a very Milltown was a very very busy uh, place at that time with the boats coming up and down Um, and we have uh, the um, the bridge there and that's where and, and that will lean up to lead up to the fen at the famous fan. The famous fan. And you're up at the crack of dawn every week as well, aren't you? <laughs> yes, every morning. <laughs> every morning. And you're getting involved. And uh, two local estates here, uh, pride of place here in the village too. Yes, uh, Mill t- Millview and uh, Fenview. And down in Fenview, uh, we in to commemorate the 1916 rising, we have a beautiful garden laid out there just in the last couple of years. And you've done a great job on that. Now, Paddy, I mean, there is a phenomenal community effort to keep this place spick and span, isn't there? Oh, yeah, yeah. We have a great community, a great working community, excuse me, <coughs> here. Yeah, the plenty of people out in the morning picking the litter and doing the clean up, the painting and the usual. The, the, the planting as well. And when you talk about the size of this village, let's put it in perspective, because it's about 400 people, that's the size of the village, and about half the village is involved in the, in the tidy uh, up. Uh, yeah, well, near enough, I'd say. Yeah, 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 near enough. Yeah. Uh, you've done a great job on the um, the, the local um, garden as well, and you've spruced that up, and you've, it really is spick and span. And of course, you're getting into spring now, lots of planting and potting and painting. Oh, we're only really start getting into it now, yeah. Starting out uh, flowers and flower beds and generally cleaning up uh, every and, day. And, and no better man to get involved. And I suppose, Dan, like uh, for anyone watching here this morning, uh, how do people get involved then in their local community? Oh, it's very simple. You just show up. Show up, uh, especially in the springtime now when work starts to get going with planting and all that. Uh, show up, there's people who are welcome into, into anyone that wants to work on a committee and it's associated work. And start from the ground up. And I suppose start small. Like Milton has done very well in the tidy town. Oh, it is, yeah. We've, we've come from a very low position now. We've won a, um, a, a kind of a, a regional county award. Mm. And uh, it, yeah, we've, we, it, we've increased our points every year in the national tidy towns competition, which is wonderful. And, and bit by bit, you're getting there. And I suppose there is a lot of focus on, on the bigger towns uh, and the bigger communities. But the villages also have their place, uh, The villages they? are crucial as well, yeah. Because while well, the big towns are fine and they do a good job, it's important that the, the country has its own villages that showcase the entire country to everybody, to the tourists, to ourselves. And there we go. Who knows? He might get the Auris next time when you run for something. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Uh, by the way, Kildare for Sam. Absolutely. Hey, Kildare for Sam. Mark it's been a long Sam. way. It's been a long way. But anyway, 1928. Uh, 1928. There you have it. Uh, for me and all the volunteers here, I mean, a fantastic community effort down here in Milltown in County Kildare. NationalSpringClean.org is where you'll find it online if you want to get involved. But for now, back to you as studio. Kildare for Sab! <laughs> I'm, I'm in the mood to do with... Yeah. I didn't realise it was that long. Yeah. Wow. I'm in the mood for a spring clean now. I might, I might clean the room. Okay. Clean. It's well, get been a, a green bag off, Derek. I'll get a green bag off you, Derek, off after you this. Show, after I, we wrap. But one thing is for sure, they really, really look after Milton. I know, they and they're, really, they're and so proud of it, and you can just you see can it. You can see it. You can really oh, see it. Delightful it. stuff. Well, still to come, we'll have advice for women on how to help mind your pelvic floor health. And it's time for the GGs, not the BGs. Oh. No, no. But you can have a dance as well if you like. <laughs> the GGs. We're talking about horses. We're talking about Ladies' Day fashion. It's all coming up soon.
she's not squatting, she's dead. <laughs> I'm in a good mood this Friday. Friday. What can I say? <laughs> uh, welcome back to the show. It's just coming up on 9 o'clock. What? Morning, Morning is flying. Anyway, here we are at Ireland AM Towers <laughs> and we've nearly a full day's work done already, so what's oh. your excuse? Yeah, well, coming up, we'll be whipping out the exercise mats and showing you ladies how to future-proof your pelvic floor. Plus, giddy up. We'll have some race day showstoppers that will turn any head at Ladies' Day. Our chef this morning is Ava Pow, and she has been having a noodle around the kitchen this morning, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> what are you making for us today, Ava? I'm making a black pepper beef hoffen. So hoffen, a wide flat rice noodle. Okay. Yes. All right, and Friday, and this is when we like to treat ourselves. That's when we like to treat ourselves, maybe get a takeaway, but then we don't need to get a takeaway we because we've got away. Ava. Absolutely. We're going, get, we're going to get a fake away instead. <laughs> love, but this is the real that. deal. That's the All real right, deal. To that a bit later. Thank you, Ava. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Well, that is coming up later. Some exciting stuff in the next hour. For first-time drivers, young drivers, <laughs> returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a Let's take a final check on your morning paper, starting with the Irish Times. Uh, they lead with abortion law review to recommend sweeping changes. The paper reports that a review into the state's abortion law is set to recommend changes to the waiting period to access termination medication and to the granting of abortions in the case of fatal fetal abnormalities. Over to the Irish Examiner, which leads with Boy 15 guilty of violent sex attack on street. It writes that a teenager who carried out a violent sex attack on a young woman in Cork City two years ago was yesterday yesterday found guilty at the Cork Circuit Criminal Court. Onto the front page of the Irish Independent and the headline, Kinahan Cartel flees to Iran to evade Gardaí and the FBI. The paper writes that cartel boss Daniel Kinahan is believed to have fled Dubai and relocated to try and avoid extradition. Onto the tabloids now and the Herald also leads with the Kinahan story going with the headline, Kinahan's go on to Iran from feds. It writes that Kinahan is believed to have relocated to Iran following fears that authorities in the United Arab Emirates would hand him over to the US authorities or on Garda Shiakana. The Irish Mirror leads with Jerry's zig and swag route. Uh, the paper claims that Jerry Hutch is planning to travel to Spain to manage the 10 million euros worth of assets he has there following his acquittal for the murder of David Byrne last Monday. Also discussing the Hutch story is the Irish Daily Star, which opens with the headline, Monk's Cost of Living Hike. The paper's sources claim that Hutch will travel through Eastern Europe en route to Spain to, quote, avoid a bullet. The Irish Daily Mail leads with higher prices here to stay. The paper reports that Taoiseach Leo Varadkar has warned that the high cost of living could be here to stay as his proposed new tax rate of 30% is believed to be unlikely to materialise. And finally, the Irish Sun opens on the headline Baldwin in clear over movie death. The paper writes that actor Alec Baldwin was last night cleared of manslaughter just two weeks before going to trial following the death of cinematographer after a gun Baldwin was handling misfired on the set of new cowboy film Rust. Now, coming up, we're talking pelvic floor health. See you right after this break. All right, welcome back to Ireland AM. Now, they say health is wealth, and that's especially true when it comes from the waist down. Physiotherapist and women's health expert Helen Keeble is here to show us some core exercises for taking care of your pelvic floor. Good morning, Helen. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us and bringing the colourful mats. I mean, you're really brightening the up the studio. Inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's chat quickly about the importance of pelvic floor health because I feel like not a lot of people talk about it. No, it is not talked about. And actually, so many people have pelvic health problems. So it's just so good to be getting the message out there and just to highlighting this problem. Absolutely. And why, why is it so vital? So when our pelvic health is good, it's, we kind of take it for granted. You know, yeah. like our bladder is good, our bowels behaving, our sexual function is all good. But when those things go a bit awry, then that's when problems happen. Um, and, you know, there's the obvious things like maybe a few bladder leaks or not getting to the toilet in time, perhaps. Oh, yeah. um, but, you know, I see in clinics that it's just far more wide reaching than that for the person. So, yeah, 
it's the physical, but then it can also have an impact like on their relationships, their mental health, their well-being. You know, it really can restrict their activities and their their work, their social life. Your so day it's, to day, yeah, absolutely, it's massive. yeah. And and would you say it's more important for women, or are women more in, uh, affected than men are? Yeah, so I would say it's really important for men and women because, yeah. you know, we all have pelvises. Um, <laughs> but it's, I guess women are just more at risk yeah. because of the, like, the stages we go through in our life mm -hmm. and we have an extra hole. So, you mm -hmm. know, like in terms of our anatomy, um, we are just a bit more at risk for pelvic health, which is why it's um, seen a bit more as a women's problem. But I definitely see men in clinic too. So you're saying how it affects, you know, our bladder, it affects our bowel movement. So <coughs> where exactly is the pelvic, would you say, the pelvic muscles? Because I'm sure a lot of people are not sure what we're talking about still. <laughs> yeah. um, so, well, this is our pelvis here. It's this region. Um, yeah, so like our pelvis is the bottom of our core yeah. and it connects our upper body to our legs. And when you put your hands on your hips, you're basically putting your hands on top of your pelvis. Ah, I see. So all the good stuff is in there. OK, OK. <laughs> so now you founded Yumi Health. Can you tell us a little bit about that business? Yeah, so that is... So Yumi Health is an online platform mm -hmm. and it's for the public and it was founded by myself, a doctor and a personal trainer, just to really help get reliable pelvic health information out there that's non-biased because mm -hmm. there's so much on social media and everyone's doing a great job, but we just want to make sure people can like have a trusted place to go. Absolutely. And would these exercises make a difference for someone who's already ex uh, experiencing pelvic issues? Like if the exercise that we're going to do now, it does involve a lot of like muscle training and breathing, isn't that right? Yeah, this is it. And breathing is really crucial. So like any muscle in the body, we want our pelvic floor muscles to be flexible, but also strong. So the flexibility comes from breathing. Okay. And then the strengthening comes from doing your Kegels or doing your pelvic floor squeezes. Okay. Um, and luckily, they're exactly the same exercise for if you have a problem and you want to get it better, yeah. or if you don't and you want to keep it that way. So okay. if you're trying to future-proof your pelvic floor, this is the same thing to do. All right, so where should we start? <laughs> I'll put this down and we can go through the exercises, okay. So let's start with breathing just because yeah. it's, in my opinion, the most important thing about the pelvic floor because yeah. the breathing will then have a knock-on um, effect onto the flexibility. Mm -hmm. So we just really simply want to breathe with our diaphragm. Yeah. So if we put our hands on the bottom of our rib cage or mm -hmm. kind of around your waist, then that's where our diaphragm is. Okay. And then we just need to take a well, just we need to take a breath in so that you feel expansion between your hands. Okay. So let's have a go. Yeah. You can feel it. Yeah, yeah you should be able to right feel up, yeah. it exactly. Um, and this is the most important thing because if we're not breathing with the diaphragm, then it means the pelvic floor muscles just can't really move. And so many people I see are like worried about leaking or perhaps prolapse and things like that. And understandably they're clenching because they're just fearful of what might happen if they don't. Yeah. But actually letting go and doing breathing yeah. is the first step in actually getting it better. Okay. Was, even though it feels a bit counterintuitive, it's really, really, really important. Yeah, all right, so we're um, breathing. And then if someone were to do this every day, um, how many minutes, seconds would you recommend? Yeah, so you can't do it too many times, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so in theory, we should actually all be breathing like this, so getting that diaphragm to move. Yeah. Um, so like if someone's kind of new to it and wants to practice and likes numbers, then I would say maybe try and do about 10 to 20 in a row okay. every hour or so. Right. So it's a lot, but because it's breathing, obviously we're breathing all the time. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> in theory, we can do it all the time. It's just kind of getting that um, headspace, I guess, to think about where it's going and just making sure that you are using your diaphragm. Yeah. People are often holding their tummy muscles in and that stops the diaphragm moving. So it's really crucial to let your tummy muscles relax, get that waist expansion. And do you know what I think? Well, we'll sit down there, but I think it's so common for a lot of women, naturally, it's like a reaction to suck your tummy in and you're holding in those muscles. So we're almost doing a disservice to ourselves doing this that, right? Yeah. This is it. And actually, if we hold our tummy muscles in, then it actually just makes our pelvic floor muscles worse. You know, it okay. really pushes down and can be detrimental. So. Gosh, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Relax. I'm going to have to let my tummy <laughs> Give you a break. Okay, okay, what's next? Um, so the next thing I want to show you is just a Kegel or a pelvic floor exercise. Well, I can't physically show you, but I can talk you through exactly yeah. what we have I've, to I've do. heard of these before. So we're basically a squeeze, is it called a sphincter? 
Yeah. <laughs> it's called a, I remember that from biology. So it's like a, we, we hold it in uh, for a couple of seconds and release. But, but what does what would Kegels do? Like, does it help with sex health or is it more with incompetence? Yeah. Yeah. So by doing Kegels or pelvic floor squeezes, it's all the same thing. Um, it really helps. There's four functions, basically. Mm -hmm. So the first one is to help with the joints in the pelvis. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just helps support and everything else. And the second one is to support our pelvic organs so our bladder, our bowels, and our uterus, if you have one. Mm -hmm. And then it also really helps to prevent any leaking. So they act like the trap door to the bladder and the bowels. Mm -hmm. And then also all of our sexual function. Yeah. So yeah. to have flexible and strong pelvic floor muscles just means just everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's so, so important. <laughs> all right, well, give it a go. Yeah. So in order to do a pelvic floor squeeze, all you have to do, so I always recommend taking that deep breath in first. So take a breath in. And out. And then to do the squeeze, you have to tighten and lift as if you're stopping wind. Okay. So you have to... <laughs> and I'm sure we all do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Although okay. I do recommend letting it out, never hold it in, but for this... <laughs> um, so you want to really... It's, it's like an internal exercise, okay. so you can't really see much on the outside, um, but you want to feel a tightening and a lift happening. Yes. And we focus around more the back passage because that's anatomically where most of the pelvic floor muscle is. Oh, okay. So even if it's a bladder problem or anything like that, we still focus around the back. Okay. So we used to get told, you know, years ago that imagine you're stopping the flow of urine and that's how you get the squeeze. Yeah. But that is outdated now. So we know, we just know a bit more. And it doesn't mean the stopping the urine is bad. It just means you won't be using the full muscle. Okay, okay. So let's do one all together in terms of the breath and then the squeeze. Okay. So we'll take a big breath in again. And then out. And then squeeze and lift. And then let it go. And that, and that is it. So then I would recommend that you do the breath in, breathe out, squeeze and lift, let go. Okay. And so, I feel like by that squeeze and lift, it's like you're contracting everything in, in the area as well. Because I know you said like you could do both, but I think that's obviously the more powerful one. Yeah, this yeah. is it. And actually you can do pelvic floor squeezes in any position. So if you're brand new to doing them, then I would say definitely start lying down because lying down is the easiest position to do them in. Mm. And then sitting is a bit harder and then standing is even harder. But it is really crucial to work your way up into standing because we just generally have problems more so in standing. You know, we don't kind of like leak when we're laying down in bed. It's more so on your way to the toilet or something like that. So it's mm -hmm. really crucial to do them, you know, work your way up into an upright position. Okay, and before I let you go, I, it's probably a, a silly question, but I heard from someone that holding in your pee actually does not do any service at all. Is that a bad thing or a good thing? Should we be <laughs> holding our horsies? <laughs> <laughs> or no? <laughs> um, no, it's a short answer. Okay. Like you can use it as a test, maybe once a month to see where you are. Yeah. And if you try and stop your wee, then if it speeds up, it means you're pushing down, which is what we shouldn't do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Taking mental notes. Well, thank you so much, Helen. It's an absolute <laughs> pleasure. If you'd like to find out more about pelvic health from Helen, you can check her out. Your tips and tricks at yumihealth.com. After the break, Martin's got some beef with our chef over in the kitchen. So stay with us and find out if they'll ever be friends again. <laughs> For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance. Call the Quote Devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Yes, thank you very much. And the Hill of Allen here just over my shoulder. Sheep grazing there in the field. What a beautiful morning we've had down here in Milltown Village in County Kildare. And a big thank you to all the volunteers we've met over the last couple of hours and to everyone taking part in the National Spring Cleanup right around the country. Best to look uh, to everyone taking part. Now, a final look at weather. Uh, we're getting past 9 o'clock, uh, 9.30 here together. Gorgeous start down here uh, for the Lily Whites. Elsewhere, we're beginning to see 
see that cloud cover uh, build now across southern sections in those moderate to locally fresh uh, northeasterly winds. They're certainly adding a nip out there in the air. Now, right across into this afternoon, uh, we will see that cloud cover build across southern sections into Munster, Connor, through parts of Leinster. The best of sunshine, take a look at the map there and across parts of Ulster through the northwest. That's where the warmest of those values will lie out there today. Top 10s of 12 to 16. And finally, then tonight, clear skies into northern spots the further south. We think once again, cloud cover building. Some heavy rain expected downpours through the Midlands into parts of Munster for Saturday as well and a chilly night in store too uh, later on tonight with values temps there back to 2 to 7 degrees. So for me and Anna Fraser on cameras here, that is your fun weather update coming to you live here from Milltown Village in County Kildare. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Yes, welcome back. Eva Pau from Asia Market has been noodling away in our kitchen all morning. Eva, they say that there's a bit of beef between us. And there is, there's <laughs> there a bit of between some us. There is some beef between <laughs> us today. <laughs> well, what are you making for us? So I'm making a black pepper beef uh, hofan stir-fry. So hofan is this lovely... Um, thick kind of rice noodle. Okay. Uh, this one is kind of it's it's you can get it in the chiller, so it's kind of like a semi fresh kind of a okay. noodle. Can so I get that in any supermarket? Do we need to go to a market to an Asian market? Asian market, yeah, is the best place to go. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, so what to do the noodles? You just need to kind of soak it in some hot water. Okay. Just for like just before you cook, so okay. just a okay. few minutes. This has a few names, doesn't it? A few different names. Uh, black pepper beef or no, no, the no, hofan. Uh, the yeah, hofan. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you can rice noodle. Rice noodle, but you see, this one, um, this dish is really nice with a thick type of a rice noodle. Okay, because so. uh, it's got, it's chow fun as well? or Chow fun. Chow fun is, yeah, exactly. It's kind of made of the same rice sheet of paper. Okay. And then, but it's just thicker and it's wrapped with some uh, filling. Okay. What I love about this is, you know, in, in the time it takes you to pick up the phone, make your order, it's the takeaway. No need and to. And it returns and arrives to the house. This is cooked because this, if you've got your prep done, can be done in about 11 minutes. Absolutely. So Let's I'm going to show you. Let's get cooking. Yeah. <laughs> so I have, we're first going to marinate the beef, okay? So how to get the beef really tender is to kind of cut it against the grain. Mm -hmm. And then I have it here. And then you're going to add in some soy sauce. So you add in a, bit, a little bit of soy and then add a little bit of um, Shaoxing wine. Mm -hmm. So I have this. Hot. Get the heat going. Get the yeah. heat going. And then some Shaoxing wine. And this just really gives a really nice flavor. And to kind of tenderize the meat, you need to add some bicarb, bicarbonate of soda. OK. So add some of, I have a half a teaspoon there and then some cornstarch. Oh. So these ingredients really help, and I'm going to add a little bit of sugar as well. So these ingredients really help kind of marinate it and make it really tender. And you'll be surprised how, how tender the beef will be when you try it. And the cornstarch kind of just uh, seals the flavour in, in the beef, so when you I try it. Should we leave that for a while, or is it you okay see, this, to just leave it It really for a few is minutes? okay, like, like I'm doing it now. I usually marinate the beef first, and then I prep my vegetables. Oh, so right. just that time to prep the vegetables, your beef will be in, there'll be enough there to make it tender. Okay, okay. So I don't have to leave it overnight? No. Just leave it as it. No, can. no, not okay. at all. Um, okay. So then I'm going to make the sauce for the noodles. So into the bowl, I'm just going to add two tablespoons of soy sauce. Then I'm going to add the shouting wine again. And this just adds a really nice flavour to it two tablespoons of that. And to this, I'm just gonna add some oyster sauce. Okay. So another two tablespoons of oyster sauce. And then to this, I'm gonna have to add some kind of, so the dark soy. So the dark soy really just gives like that lovely color to the noodles. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of that. And then, so the noodles don't look, cause the noodles are white, you want it to make it yeah. look a bit kind okay. of nicer. And then a little bit of the rice wine vinegar. So about half a tablespoon of that and two teaspoons of the sugar. So because I've added in quite a lot of salty stuff, I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of sugar to balance that out. And the coarse black pepper. This is the coarse black pepper. You just have to smell this. Okay. Different to, we sell this in like a big packet. Oh, yeah. And so you kind of, 
can tell a lot of the restaurants would use this. I'm just glad I didn't sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> so this so this is just your sauce and it's ready made. And now we're just gonna heat the pan up. And add get in the whole a bit. Thing going. Exactly. So it's really kind of quick and simple as long as you have, as you said, your prep work. So I'm gonna add quite a little bit more oil because I'm going to be frying everything. I'm going to be frying the onions in the pan and then kind of frying mm. the beef in it as well. So okay. you just need a bit like four tablespoons of oil or something, you know, a bit okay. more oil okay. than so normal. So what veg are we adding? So into this, I'm just going to add some garlic. Okay. Okay. So fry off your garlic first and so then... So about two cloves? Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, oh, very I good. Just very good, Martin. Said, That's more than one. <laughs> yeah, so um, two uh, cloves of garlic kind of finely diced and then I'm just going to add in the onions. So you fry these off first. Mm -hmm. um, so that's about half an onion kind of finely chopped. You see, when you're stir frying, if you cut the vegetables, I've kind of cut them quite thinly. It will kind of it will cook, cook quicker. quicker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you kind of stir fry this for a good kind of two minutes or so. And then you kind of swish it to the side and then you add in your beef. OK. OK. So you just want to kind of so we're not going to mix the two together just yet. No. Keep so them separate. Yeah, yeah. So you just kind of want to have it there. Um, Do we frying. need a high heat or a medium heat? I have it on a medium high heat now. So. Okay. So you just want to be able to kind of uh, fry the beef on both sides, and then you're going to add in the rest of your vegetables, then your noodles, and then your sauce. Okay. And this is sirloin that you've used for this. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's. It, I think it's about cutting cutting the beef kind of in a. In, you said against, against the, the grain, grain yeah. yeah, and that really makes a difference along with the bicarb because the bicarb of soda actually in a lot of restaurants they, that's how they what they use to tenderize the beef. Ah, right. So that really helps kind of make the difference when you, when you're um, cooking the beef. Okay, we got about two minutes. Right, so I need to really <laughs> get cracking. Get cracking. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you. So you cook the beef for a bit longer, right, and yeah. then you add in your peppers. Okay. Okay, and again, like nearly julienne, they've been sliced. Yeah, I've kind of really th finely sliced them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you stir fry that for another two minutes. Okay, then you add in your noodles. So you make a little well in the middle, and, and then you add in your noodles. So we've been so, chatting, and they've just been sitting in exactly in, just in, in some hot water. Yeah, if you, I, I've just put them into kind of a boiling, boiling hot water, yeah. and left them sitting. Okay, so noodles in, mm -hmm. and then your sauce in. Oh, you can hear that lovely sizzle. And that's it. So you wow. just kind of mix it all in. And like you said, we're going to get that nice golden colour on the noodles too. Exactly. So you basically stir fry all that in and for about another four minutes mm -hmm. and you'll be done. All the details you'll find on our website if you want to go over there. I and forgot the scallions. Finally, <laughs> so scallions into... go in at the very end because yeah. they don't actually need as much uh, mm -hmm. time. But what I have one made here earlier so that you can try it. Looking forward to this. But so that would just like we said it would take you know a couple of minutes for the for the onion and the garlic. But four or five minutes for the beef would it be? Even? Yeah, I'd say four that? minutes for the yeah. beef. And then, uh, the and then you just add in the rest of the noodles because the noodles don't take that long and that's why you just want to add it in at the very end. Because the, the, the hot water has actually cooked it already. So okay. let me just serve you some of this noodle. That looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> and there is, like you said, there's, there's variations of this, but this is, oh. I think, I, I, I just really like the, the black pepper. Putting in the coarse black pepper really adds in that lovely flavor. It's one of my favorite dishes when I go, if I'm getting Asian food, is, is black that pepper. <laughs> Philip beef in black pepper. Now you can make it at home. <laughs> that is really, really gorgeous. And I love the noodles. Yeah, you see, this is the thing. The noodles make the difference, I think, because, like, depending on what noodles you use, this type is just a really kind of... It's not too soft. It's, it has a really good texture to it. Ava, it's a success. Absolute success. Good to see you. Uh, remember, if you want to have a go at cooking Ava's Beef Hope Fun, full recipe details are up on our website. We'll take a quick break now. Fashion is on the way after the break.
very welcome back. We're bang in the middle of racing season and if you're lucky enough to be heading to Ladies' Day event, you'll need to know what to wear. So Styland, Brosnan Lifts it joins us. The best of the best. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me today. I love, there's nothing more I love than getting a group of my girls together and we go and parade our way through the races. It's not only entertainment for yourself, but for everyone else. We're not watching I, the race. You're, we're we're no. just, you, you go, you get a yeah. nice drink, you look good, you take the pics and you fun with the girls. That's we what it's all about. We are getting dressed up. I was <laughs> saying I look like a peacock today and I'm feeling it. Oh, you're turning heads and we do have our first look that yes. I think will turn heads as well. Who have we got? So our first look here is Yumiko and she is looking so fabulous. So whether you're entering a ladies day or just going for having some fun, we have you covered today. All of our head pieces today are from Mark Millinery, an Irish designer. She takes so much time to do these pieces between 20 and 30 hours. You can and see the detail. Yeah, the detail is yeah. absolutely incredible and it's all rental, which is really handy because, you know, she does make bespoke pieces and yeah. you can buy them. This is the boater style. I think it's so pretty warm and it's so classic. Absolutely. How much would this be to rent now? To rent, all of the hats today are 50 euro, but, you know, you can also purchase it. But if you are only wearing it once or twice, okay. Renting is a great option, yeah. so I love that. Now we're going to go on to the jewellery. The jewellery, the devil is in the detail. It's every, If you are entering the Ladies' Day, the judges are going to be looking at your earrings, your necklace, your handbag. So we have this beautiful jewellery from Betty and Biddy. You can buy it online. It's really, really affordable. And, you know, it gives you that kind of magpie effect yeah, where yeah. people are just drawn to you. I love the bling crystal earrings. They've got this beautiful glass crystal. And then these um, necklaces, they have this layered look but are attached, so, which oh, I love. Are. Yes, because... That makes it so much I, easier. It does, <laughs> yeah. And it just, but it just looks really intentional. Yeah. This dress is from Club L London. I absolutely adore the colour of it. It's got these really dramatic sleeves. This beautiful pink is just so eye-catching. You're going to be turning heads in the crowd. And we've teamed it here with a little pop of gold in the handbag. Again, it's all about the detail. This clutch is just really geometric looking. It's from She Neil Shoes in Oranmore in Galway. Yeah. They are online as well, a female run business. They have absolutely stunning shoes for every occasion. These are the Lodi shoes that they have there. And the best thing about these is they have the gel insole. So you're not going to be wobbling around. There's nothing worse than wearing a beautiful outfit and then you have this kind of duck walk because you're in pain. it's not too high, which is It's which not is good. too high, yeah. yeah and it has this tiered that. heel. So you actually have a bit more stability. Amazing. Next up, we have the beautiful Jessica in green. Again, we're starting off with this halo style head, um, headband. And as you saw, Kate Middleton was kind of one of the first to really bring the headband uh, a trend on. And it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. This has this gorgeous kind of structured bow detail. Mm -hmm. Then it has big, this is, it'll actually really give you a lot of height as well. So you'll really make an entrance wearing this. Then it has this beautiful neck detail over it. Again, 50 euro to rent and you can pair this, you can color block it. There's so many different ways you can wear this. Then we have the earrings. We went with a really simple, kind of um, hoop style look. It's a really tight look. Again, if you are wearing these really big pieces, sometimes less is more when it comes to jewellery. Yeah, and yeah. I think these these little hoops, they're going to do, you know, you're going to be able to dress them up or down. And I just think they really add a little bit of brightness to your face. Uh, again, we have the beautiful necklace, which has a pop of green in it. Now, let's go on to our look. It might be raining that day. It might be a little bit on the colder side. Blazers are your friends. I absolutely love this blazer. This look is from Pamela Scott in stores and online. This is such a gorgeous, chic, white blazer. Again, we've dressed it up here with this beautiful dress. Jessica, would you mind taking off your blazer? And I'd love to show you the sleeves. They're they a bit ruched, don't they? Yeah, they have these kind of like big ruching sleeves yeah. and they're really, really pretty. That really feminine look. This would also be great for a wedding or an everyday look. 
really in the summer. It's a gorgeous quality. It goes up to a size 20 and it does have that stretchy waist so it's really, really comfortable. Again, this is Pamela Scott's uh, take on the Hermes bag. Oh, A yeah. really gorgeous size and this is a great size because you can put, if you do want to put your flats in your bag and your umbrella and all the other bits you need that day. Now we're going to go on to these gorgeous shoes. Again from Chenille Shoes, these are the Lodi wedges. The wedges are back and they're so comfortable. They're back for a reason. If you're walking around the grass, you won't be stuck in the mud. I know they are. It's a hefty price tag on them. They're not cheap, but it, like what, so what are we paying for? Are you paying for you're the paying comfort? You're paying for comfort. There are gel insoles. Okay. You're also paying for the quality of their leather. Mm -hmm. And then they're also designer Lodi, but they are a piece that yeah. you will wear a lot. Yeah, to stay full. You'll keep, you'll keep them. So now we have the drama here with Kelly. And sometimes you don't think black on a race day, but I'm sorry. Imagine Kelly walking through the crowd in races and you see this vision. <laughs> We're going to start again with the hat. If Kelly could turn around, please the back detail of the bow and the hat love it's that. just so gorgeous I love that you just wear a big high pony or sorry a big bun or you can wear your hair down it's so chic it's so striking and with the hair up the earrings are stand out where are they from? yes so they are again from Betty and Biddy I think with a more kind of slick back look like this you can go really big with the jewellery so we went all out here then we've got the gorgeous knot detail on the necklace now let's go to the drama of the dress this is from Club L London. The feather detail of the gorgeous wide sleeve. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of a faux wrap style dress. So really, really flattering. It does have a little slit of the side, but for modesty, it has this beautiful draping. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. What a stunning piece. And it's also got a light stretch, so you're not going to feel uncomfortable. Now we're gonna go on to, again, gorgeous clutch perfect bag for your day and it matches the stunning shoes again from Chenille Shoes these are Lodi also they're a really dainty strappy sandal really sexy and they really uh, look amazing with this whole look really put it together. And that's another investment piece for the wardrobe. Yes yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. well all the, qu the quality of the, the shoes at Chenille are top tier they're yeah. all designer and um, a really good quality so they're made to last. And last but not least our final look here is unique she is bringing the colour because <laughs> summer is here. So we're starting off with the headband. And again, this is just all handmade and it's really been, you know, um, it's just a you lot. You can see it. Yeah, you can it's see not the just detail. one piece. Yeah. Each bead has been strategically paced. Then it has this kind of a less of a halo effect, so it's not as high, but it still gives you the drama. And we're going on to the earrings, again, from Betty and Biddy. I love how cute these earrings are. I'm a big fan of a heart uh, pearl, so I think that's absolutely gorgeous. Again, with the pearl necklace, it just adds that little bit of a feminine touch and really finishes the outfit. Now we're gonna go on to this look. Again, a blazer, uh, such a great piece to wear at the races. It looks really, really put together, but not as heavy as a coat. This look it's from Pamela Scott. They have gorgeous blazers there. And again, dress it up and dress it down. Then we have this beautiful dress. This is such a comfortable chic dress. It's cotton. It has these beautiful tiers. And again, you can wear this to so many things. Yeah, it's, it's such nice a showstopper. The, the print. The print is obviously coming back in a big way this yeah, summer. Yeah, I love a floral look. And again, it's so eye-catching. If you are entering the ladies' day, you do want to kind of make sure you turn heads and uh, you dress to entertain this is bringing the drama then again we have this beautiful bag it's in this kind of ivory color and it's got this croc detail a really really good size and now we're going to go on to the shoes again from she nail shoes these are platforms the brand is unessa again wow. platforms are a really great option they yeah. give you the height they also give you the comfort they also have the gel in insoles so you're not going to be hobbling around oh, and you're going to have the best day i have to say all the looks are Absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Rosalind. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and now it's over to Martin. <laughs> uh, coming up on Ireland AM tomorrow, they've taken the entertainment world by storm. Now they've a new passion project, race cars. Brothers AJ and Curtis Pritchard will be chatting to us. And teen magician Killian O'Connor moved the Britain's Got Talent judges and everybody else that was watching last weekend to tears, including me. And I'm delighted to say that Killian will be joining us on the show tomorrow. And the family backstabbing plots have self-made succession, one of the TV hits of the decade. We delve into the trials and tribulations of sibling rivalry. Oh, oh that oh, would be good. Oh, yeah, with succession is brilliant. All that plus <laughs> custard tart in the kitchen and occasion wear on the catwalk. We're back tomorrow from 9 o'clock.
I'll see you then. See you then. Take care, <laughs> public.